สวัสดีค่ะคุณประพันธ์คุณประพันธ์สวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับค่ะ uh, What is your suggestion now on the government's plan to drain water from the flooded industrial estates? Uh, we, we are working with the uh, uh, SCT, the Stockholm of Thailand, uh, under the guidance of the uh, to help uh, once the water level is getting down, then we'll be, be preparing our pump uh, to get into those industrial estates and uh, get the water out of the industrial estate as, hot, as quick as possible. But uh, we have to wait until the water level recedes. Mm -hmm. And as you also, uh, Kun Prapan, as you also have to wait for the water levels to retreat, um, how long would it take if the operation would start to, to drain the waters from all the estates? Uh, well, according to right now, uh, our present information, and I said present information, mm -hmm. uh, because information today is so messed up. Uh, and I, I like everyone to have a clear mind, a good mindfulness, to consider uh, the news that's coming in. It's not as worse as, you know, uh, people think it is. It's just a flood. Uh-huh, uh -huh. I we see. We're not having an earthquake, we are not having a tsunami. So, so be calm and, and listen carefully, uh, you know, li uh, digest your, the news very carefully. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the situation in, in, in all these uh, industries, uh, I think once we, we can, the water level recedes and once we can put our pump in place, uh, should be within five days we can clear the water out. Mm -hmm. So if the operation starts, then nearly a week the water would be rid of in the industrial estates? That, that's what we believe from the present situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Kun Prapan, what is your advice to factories in the affected area? What measures should they be taking to reduce the damages uh, due to the floods? Uh, but for those in, in the, uh, right now in the industry estate, I don't think I have any uh, suggestion for them. I mean, it's underwater already. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, you know, I think like a bunch should be okay. Uh, you know, uh, like, uh, the one that we have, I think people are concerned more is like a bunch industrial estate right now. Uh huh. Kun Prapan, and, um, are your methods going to be used in other areas as well that water has been left over after the water levels and the floods recede? I mean, like, as you said, you were going to help the industrial estates. Are you going to help the other areas as well if the waters are still there? I think we, we, we are a small company. We have limited resources. Mm. But what we, are, what we are planning to do is help, uh, you know, whatever in, in the best we can. We are not really affected. Uh, on business by, by, by this crisis. But, uh, our people also affected, so we look after our people. We try to do as much as we can to help uh, the public in general. Uh, uh, we are putting more pumps to help pumping uh, the, the water into the, the, the Gulf of Thailand uh, in, in the Kong, near the Kongdan area. We are coordinating and working with Kungira uh, Wong Sangna uh, the chairman of the relief, uh, water relief operation there. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, with all parts, I think it's time for us to unite it and, you know, try to help uh, as much as we can mm -hmm. without panicking. Yeah, it, it would be good if we just keep the panic out and be, just be prepared. And just out of curiosity, Kun Prapan, do you think that, uh, let's hope not the flood, Let's hope the flood does not happen again next year. But do you see your cooperation with the government sector to continue even after this? Well, we 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 you know, try to to contribute as much as we can. As I said, it, it's it's a major, it's a national agenda here, and I think we need united uh, unity to, to to work this out. Uh, you know. Uh, put down our ego and, and you know sit down together after everything's clear and and continue on mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see Kun Bapan. thank you for your for joining us and thank you for helping in the stress states thank you thank you very thank much. you so much mm -hmm.
let's take a hindsight again. Today, Kunwina, yesterday, I wasn't mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I was actually in Yawarat or the Chinatown district to check out the daily lives, you know, because it's actually uh, the middle class market. That's where mm -hmm. middle class people dwell. Mm -hmm. And usually, the, the food market would be the last place to close, even mm -hmm. if the floods did happen. So let's take a look at the scoop right now. Right now, I'm in Yawarat Junction, also known as the Chinatown of Thailand. World famous for its trade of food, jewelry, electronic material, and gold, this is considered the dwelling place of middle class buyers. Now, this area is in the vicinity, 10 kilometers away from Dao Priya River. And as officials said, if the Dao Priya River swells, areas within 10 kilometers may be inundated. And so far, I haven't seen that much defenses, only minimal sandbags blocking water. Today, let's investigate how their daily lives are affected of this flood panic. Upon arriving at Yawarat Junction, the preparations for the flood were surprisingly low. Only big firms had the money and time to blockade their entrances with sandbags and some with walls. After stopping for the famous Yawarat noodles, I had an opportunity to talk to the restaurant owner about how this flood was affecting her company and business. The flood panic, according to the restaurant owners, has caused their sales to drop by 50 percent. Not only Thai people, now foreign customers are starting to disappear from the Yawarat streets. That is not the only problem. The other main issue is people stacking up supplies, which has caused a shortage and also caused the prices of food to soar. When I asked her whether she was going to protect her restaurant or not, she said no, because even if she boarded up the front, water would come from underground or from behind anyways. She had no time or money to be trying to make a futile attempt to protect herself from being flooded as well as her company. Clean water has become a very important issue. After the officials said tap water may not be accessible, people have now started to store and stash water with these water tanks, as well as rubber boots to protect themselves from the flood water. Sampeng is the largest wholesale and retail market in the old town. Here, trade is still going on as normal as if nothing has happened. The defenses here are very minimal, so if the flood really does hit this area, the damage will be critical. Everything is for sale here. Traders and exchangers are still going on as usual, while Bangkokians are bracing for the flood. Even though the trade here seems normal, the concentration that buyers are looking for are equipments that would save them from the flood. Now let's take a look at the revered industries such as jewelry and gold. In such times of crisis, how would these products react to the market? So in these times when people are preparing for the flood, how is the jewelry industry doing for your business? Normally by this year, by end of year, we normally have uh, many, many customers visiting us mm -hmm. for the reason of a wedding, for the wedding season, yes. something like this. But for the flooding come, the, this crisis make a customer now disappear a lot. Less than half of customer, they are busy with their factory, their business, and they even postpone their wedding ceremony till next year, I think. So how does the value of the product jewelry mm -hmm. become reduced in times of crisis like this? Actually, the price is still normally the same. We, we, we don't have uh, the I mean, the policy to drop the price yet, but uh, the jewelry has its own value. So the price is not up and down a lot, not a big change. Unlike the necessity products like rice, water, that sometimes they, they up the price, mark up the price. Yep. So, so it's not fluctuating compared to other goods? No. And how would you protect your business if the flood does reach Bangkok? Actually, uh, we are lucky because uh, our products will not get damaged easily like other products. We just keep them in the secure place, like uh, put a, a lot uh, higher security f into our safe. 
see. Mm -hmm. So what are the precautions that you have done to, for your shop to raise for the This area is uh, in Chinatown. We are in Chinatown. And uh, next, is, we, we are located near the Chao River. So sometimes the tide is higher, and sometimes the price, the, the, high, the tide is uh, So right now, if you can see, we have some uh, concrete blocks. Yeah, but not too high. Just to protect in, in, the, in front, the entrance. Yeah, that's it. And how do you see your industry performing after the flood? Do you think it's going to recover, or do you think it's going to take some more time? Uh, I think we're going to take some more time, because uh, the jewelry product is not quite a necessity things in our life, yes. But I think in the wrong run, the, the customer will come back after they uh, prepared their business very well and get recovered, yep, their home. This is the last item that customer will think about it. ก็เรื่องที่1ก็คือว่าเราต้องฟังจากทางราชการว่าพื้นที่บริเวณของเราเนี่ยคาดว่าน้ําจะสูงประมาณสักเท่าไหร่เราก็เตรียมมาตรการป้องกันไว้ตามระดับแล้วก็เผื่อขึ้นมาอีกสักนิดหน่อยก็คือเผื่อขึ้นมาอีกสัก30เซนซึ่งตอนนี้ที่เราใช้ก็คือใช้กระสอบทรายเป็นหลักเพราะเราถือว่าเราไปกรุงเทพชั้นในนะฮะแล้วก็คงมีน้ําท่วมขังแต่ถ้ามาตรการาชการแจ้งมาว่าอาจจะสูงขึ้นอีกเราก็ต้องก่อเป็นซีเมนต์เพื่อป้องกันพื้นที่รอบบ้านคือตอนนี้เราแค่ป้องกันแค่น้ําเข้าออกเล็กน้อยฮะเดือนสองเดือนที่แล้วก็อาจจะได้ยินคําว่าคนตื่นทองแต่ปัจจุบันเนี้ยคนตื่นเรื่องกระสอบทรายกับน้ําน้ํากินมากกว่านะตอนนี้ณปัจจุบันเนี่ยเพราะนั้นทองนี่ณปัจจุบันกําลังซื้อไม่มีนะครับเนี่ยการลงทุนมันไม่ใช่อยู่ในภาวะการลงทุนหรือการแต่งตัวเพื่อความสวยงามมันอยู่ที่ว่าการป้องกันภัยจากน้ําท่วมนะมันก็เลยกําลังซื้อมันก็จะขดไปเป็นกระทันหันแค่นั้นเองแต่เลยจากนี้ไปแล้วก็กลับมาเริ่มต้นใหม่ได้คือถ้าค่าเงินบาทเราอ่อนใช่ไหมครับเนื่องจากว่าเราส่งออกไม่ได้ค่าเงินบาทเราจะอ่อนมันก็จะเป็นตัวคูณของทําให้ราคาทองเราขึ้นนะครับ overlooking Padung Gung Kasem Canal here I can see why the people here are still living pretty lenient lives the capacity for this canal has not reach its limit yet or even near. However, this does not guarantee that Yawarat or Chinatown will not be flooded. As one trader said, each goods also takes their turns of being high and low in demand. Once revered goods such as gold and jewelry now have been neglected by traders as they head for more necessary items such as water and food. It's an ironic twist of fate for both the goods and the people here. This is Dr. Gon Bloody reporting for ASEAN TV.